Last year, China's global car exports reached a staggering 57% growth rate versus the previous year. I mean, 57% growth, that's insane. However, a lot of people thought, well, China's growth will slow down now, but it hasn't. It continues to fire this year. And China's sales, well, honestly, I don't think they're going to slow down because if you actually have a look at the countries that China is exporting cars to, you realize that they're not actually really Europe or America. So China won't be as affected by the new tariffs as what people are thinking. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Now, I should point out to you, the Chinese government is threatening the European Union. It's saying it's given the European Union a cutoff date. I believe it's the 7th of July, uh, four days before my, my boy's birthday. Anyway, uh, cutoff date that it's saying that's when these subsidies have to be removed. Otherwise, China will retaliate, which, you know, we'll see what happens there. It very well could. That would obviously hurt brands, in particular, Porsche more than anyone else who are already struggling in China. And keep in mind, Porsche make around, well, in just over one third of their sales and profits come from China. And those are being decimated right now. So Porsche is in a bit of trouble right now, guys. Porsche's share price is probably likely to take a big hammering. If you're invested in Porsche, I would warn you now, the pain is going to come. I know Porsche cars are great. I'm not saying they're not. It's got nothing to do with that. It's all about the reality, the geopolitics here, actual Porsche sales in China. The brand has lost favor in China. But anyway, getting back to this story here, China, right? Growth of 57.4% in global exports last year. China became the largest exporter, overtook Japan, overtook California, overtook Germany. The largest exporter of cars worldwide, 5.2 million vehicles. And in the first five months of this year, China's exports have grown an additional 27% on top of last year. So as you can see, China's growth is pretty spectacular. So this year, the first five months of this year, China exported two and a half million vehicles. And what that means is that China's growth is really showing no signs of slowing down. In the first five months of this year, those sales, two and a half million cars or 2.45 million, equated to a total of 46.4 billion US dollars. That's massive. The top five countries, though, give you an idea of why this growth is probably not going to slow down anytime soon. Russia, number one, 103,763 cars. Basically, the Russian war has given China an opportunity to enter that car market and they've seized it. A lot of European Western automakers have left Russia and China has stepped in to fill the void. Second, Brazil, 53,000 deliveries to Brazil. That's about half the Russian number. Mexico is third with 42,000. Belgium fourth with 28,900. And the UAE in fifth, or the United Arab Emirates. China are definitely going after places like Southeast Asia in terms of exporting cars. Australia, um, the Middle East, as you can see. Also Central and South America and Russia. Not just Russia, but also Central European countries that are not part of the European Union. Basically, China's saying, well, if this does happen, if these taxes in Europe do happen and taxes in the US are happening, it doesn't matter. We're going to take over all of your other car markets and we'll squeeze you that way. Now, China may not be saying that, but you get my point, right? It's going to make things tough because Volkswagen, General Motors, Ford, etc., they are being squeezed in every market except for their home market of America and Europe or and Germany, I should say. Now, the five countries where the most EVs were exported to from China are Brazil, Belgium, the United Kingdom, Mexico, and Thailand. Now, as you can see, um, the only tariffs on Chinese EVs um, out of those countries is Belgium, with 26,502 deliveries of EVs to Belgium. But keep in mind, a lot of those were the Volvo EX30, and the Volvo EX30 will be now be made in Belgium. So it won't be affected too badly. Yes, there are other, other manufacturers, EVs exported from China to Belgium, but yeah, it won't make a huge din, I don't think. Now, in May 2024, 207,000 EVs were exported, a year-over-year increase of 33%. 
January to May, 870,000 EBs were exported, a year-on-year -year increase of 29%. So, so far this year, China has exported nearly a million electric cars worldwide, with a growth of 29%, higher than its growth rate for internal combustion vehicles. The top five countries says Car News China for Chinese exports from the January to May period in total sales, Russia, 372,000, clearly the number one country for China. Second, Mexico, 191,000. Third, Brazil, 160,000. Fourth, Belgium, 124,000. And fifth, the UAE with 115,000. But when it comes to EVs, the most EVs went to Brazil with 131,000, Belgium, 115,000, the United Kingdom, 68,000, Thailand, 55,000, and the Philippines, 45,000. Now, Australia wasn't too far behind in terms of car deliveries as well. So yeah, Chinese car companies are certainly planning on taking over a significant portion of the Australian car market because it's open. There's no taxes. It's very close to China. Uh, or there's a 5% tax, I believe, something like that. It's very, very small. Now, keep in mind as well as that, Chinese car companies are really manufacturing not just bleeding edge, cutting edge electric cars, but their plug-in hybrids are significantly better than those from manufacturers like Toyota. Now, realistically, guys, which Toyota vehicle do you know of, hybrid, uh, that has a normal size petrol tank or gas tank and does 2,000 kilometers of range? 2,000 kilometers. You don't know of any because there aren't any. They don't exist. Toyota's plug-in hybrids are straight garbage Facts are the facts. They are garbage in comparison to the new plug-in hybrids coming out of China. And if I wasn't right on this, why the freak is Toyota now going, oh, well, thank you, BYD. We're going to use your technology and our amazing hybrids because our hybrids are so good. We're going to use your technology. There you go. Facts are facts. Even Toyota has admitted it themselves. Uh, this Chinese plug-in hybrid technology, it's far superior than what Toyota has. My warning to you is this. If you buy a, a Toyota hybrid vehicle right now, it will be superseded by far superior product within a couple of years. You are making a catastrophic mistake. People will not come along and buy your secondhand Toyota Land Cruiser or Prado like they have in the past. They're gonna come along and go, wow, the technology in your car is ancient. I don't think I want that. I don't think I want that crap. My, my concern is guys, a lot of people spending $100,000, massive sums of money on cars, which will be completely obsolete within a few years time. And this is the reason we're seeing these massive increase in China's car sales, not just around the world, but particularly in China, because consumers are saying, you know what? We have new technology. You Japanese automakers, you Western automakers, you're sitting on your asses, you're doing jack, you're lazy, and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna actually work hard. We're gonna provide the best technology. That's what they're doing. That's why Toyota's saying, well, we can't do it. You know, Toyota has twice as many staff as any other car company in the world. What exactly are they all doing? Watching disruption happen is what they're doing. Thanks for watching.